The Indian River Lagoon stretches for 156 miles along Florida's east coast. The estuary, where the river meets the sea, is home to thousands of species of plants and animals, and scientists consider it one of the most biodiverse waterways in North America. But as beautiful as it looks, this ecosystem now struggles to survive. Brian LaPointe is a scientist at Florida Atlantic University's Harbor Branch Oceanographic Institute. We're having a crisis in the Indian River Lagoon from excessive amounts of nutrients like nitrogen and phosphorus that are causing harmful algal blooms. Some of these are toxic and some are not toxic, but still cause ecological damage. Those nutrients in the water come from sewage and fertilizers and can spur algal blooms when algae grows out of control, blocking sunlight and starving the water of oxygen. The blooms destroyed over half the seagrass in the lagoon during the past five years. In March of this year, they caused one of the biggest fish kills in the estuary's history. It killed millions of fish, but also just it, it, it caused die off of a lot of the biological diversity that we have in the lagoon. In May, the St. Lucie River, which is part of the Indian River Lagoon, became so polluted that the Florida Department of Health warned residents not to touch the water. This toxic blue-green algae smothered parts of the river, suffocating endangered manatees. Trying to breathe in that, that is Aww. so horrendous. Pictures and videos of the contamination are all over social media. In this one, a manatee swims through the thick sludge, desperate for relief, as good Samaritans hose it down with fresh water. Oh, that's it, buddy. Scientists say the river is heavily polluted by water released from nearby Lake Okeechobee, which is drained regularly to prevent flooding. The drainage dumps excess algae and agricultural fertilizer runoff into the river. Last month, officials curtailed the discharges to help keep the toxic algae under control. However, the water from Lake Okeechobee isn't the only culprit. We have two major problems. The discharge from the lake, bringing a lot of fresh water into the system, and then all the septic tanks that are also draining into the system with fecal coliform bacteria. And it, it really is like the perfect storm coming together and creating a, a big, big problem in this area. In the last 60 years, the number of people living in the five counties around the lagoon has doubled. Many of their homes use septic tanks to treat sewage. And LaPointe says that's a big part of the problem. The problem is septic tanks really don't treat the sewage to a very high level. They're not engineered to remove nutrients and they don't disinfect. So today we have uh, upwards of 600,000 septic tanks uh, leaching into tidal creeks and canals that flow into the Indian River Lagoon. LaPointe and his team regularly test the water. He says traces of human pollution from septic tanks are everywhere. Artificial sweeteners, acetaminophen, the active ingredient in Tylenol, and fecal matter. <laughs> there are 800 to 1,000 dolphins living in the lagoon at any given time. Many are infected with E. coli and antibiotic-resistant bacteria, commonly found in human sewage from septic tanks. The once clear, sandy bottom of the water is now full of dead algae. You can see the other thing that happens, of course, from the septic tanks is the buildup of muck. Over time, as the algae blooms and dies, it forms this black muck. According to the Environmental Protection Agency, more than one in five homes in the United States relies on septic tanks to treat their sewage. The tanks work best in rural areas with dense soil and where homes are spread out. The tanks are installed underground and receive waste from bathrooms, kitchens, and laundry machines. Inside the tank, solid waste is separated from liquid waste. The liquid then flows into the ground. If the soil is dense enough, it can filter out bacteria and viruses, naturally cleaning the wastewater before it reaches a drinking supply or body of water. One septic tank by itself isn't a problem, but when you have high densities of septic tanks, thousands or in some cases tens of thousands in poor soil conditions close to a sensitive water body like the Indian River Lagoon, then you've got a big problem. 
In areas like Cape Cod, Massachusetts and Long Island, New York, scientists are also seeing increased algal blooms. Last year, on the east end of Long Island, dark patches of algal blooms spurred out of control, killing hundreds of thousands of fish in the Peconic River estuary. Scientists said that the 360,000 septic tanks near the water contributed to the problem. LaPointe believes there should be stronger government oversight where septic tanks are built. People, they get their permits legally permitted by the state agencies and the health departments. They think it's working just fine. It's like this magic box underground. Three years ago, Bethany and Sean Quinn moved into their home just across the street from the St. Lucie River. It's the same house Bethany grew up in. They now think part of what's hurting the waterway is the septic tank buried in the front yard. Theirs is one of 30,000 septic tanks in Florida's Martin County suspected of seeping into the water. If I had my preference, I'd, I'd much rather have it be something that you know, goes and is treated and the water is reclaimed and, and you know, turned into something useful. The Quinns say the water isn't as healthy as it used to be. They don't swim in it anymore and they won't let their two daughters go near it. And now people aren't catching as much fish, you don't see any seagrass, you rarely see shells. I mean it's just, you know, it's changing right before our eyes in our generation that we've seen. I, I don't see how it can come back. But enough attention and maybe Maybe we'll be successful. One county trying to do something about it is Martin County. Commissioner Doug Smith is spearheading a $138 million project to clean up the river. The plan over the next 20 years is to connect over 10,000 houses that rely on septic tanks to sewage lines. So this is groundwater right here. Yeah, so here, here's the challenge. On the side of the road a quarter mile from the river, Smith says this puddle of groundwater is a sign of why septic tanks don't belong in these kind of neighborhoods. The groundwater is right there and you're only two or three feet below the surface level of where we are standing. And so all of these homes have both their septic systems and their drain fields sitting right on top of that. Why were developers allowed to build so many septic tanks close to the shoreline? The development community for a long time, um, it, it, was, it was a lot about how can we get the most units built as quickly as possible. Time has moved on. Um, there's a lot more awareness, there's a lot more consciousness now as to how we deal with life. It's, you know, it's not it's not proper to have a septic system on the edge of a water bottle anywhere in the United States. With the goal of having homeowners convert from septic tanks to sewer systems over the next 20 years, many Martin County residents will be mandated to replace their septic tanks and pay around $8,500 per household to connect to sewage lines. People who can't pay up front will be allowed to pay in installments over 20 years added onto their property taxes. And just last month, Florida Governor Rick Scott called septic tank runoff a major contributor to the pollution in these water bodies. He also said he would propose new funding for a 50-50 matching grant to encourage residents to move from septic tanks to sewer systems in order to curb pollution and to meet the increased demand for wastewater services. People want to have good, healthy water. They want it to be clean water, and it really should be. Um, generations ago, it was. And so everybody's hope is that we can get back to that. Susie DiBartolo is one homeowner who is eligible to connect to sewer lines. She signed up right away and paid thousands of dollars to get rid of her septic tank. I was so excited to do it, I started saving in advance for this. And it was just like night and day. I've never had another worry or concern since, and everything works perfectly. DiBartolo moved to Martin County 40 years ago to this house overlooking the St. Lucie River. But she has sold her boat and her kayaks are stored away. Okay, Lisa, you see how that is just totally dead. You don't see any sign of life down there. I wouldn't dare get in here. DiBartolo says she misses the flourishing lagoon and life in her neighborhood isn't the same. It's just a, a very sad reality. Life changes and um, I'm hopeful that something can be done to uh, improve it where we could get back out on the water.